Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this video, we will learn about some of the timing specifications of the flip-flop. Like what is setup time, hold time and propagation delay of the flip-flop. So before I discuss about the setup time and the hold time, first of all let us discuss about the rise time and the fall time. Because so far in our discussion of the digital circuits, we haven't discussed about the rise time and the fall time. So in the earlier videos of the flip-flop, we have already seen the timing diagrams. And in the timing diagram, if you have observed, the clock signal as well as the inputs and outputs were changing very sharply. For example, if you take this clock signal, then there is a very sharp low to high and the high to low transitions. But actually, the clock signal will take certain time to go from the low to high as well as from high to low level. So the rise time and the fall time defines the time required by the signal to go from the low level to the high level and the high level to the low level. And generally, these times are measured between the 10% to the 90% of the signal level. So if I talk about the rise time of the signal, then it is the time required by the signal to reach from the 10% to the 90% of the signal amplitude. So if the logic high corresponds to 5 volt, then this rise time is the time required by the signal to reach from the 0.5 volt to the 4.5 volt. Similarly, the fall time is the time required by the signal to reach from the 90% to the 10% of the signal amplitude. So the rise time and the fall time of the signal can be same or it can be different. But here we are assuming that both the rise time and the fall time are same. So when we are measuring the pulse width, then it is measured with respect to the 50% of the pulse amplitude. And in fact, the rising and the falling edges of the clock are also defined with respect to the 50% of the clock amplitude. But here during our discussion, for the simplicity we will assume that there is a sharp transition in the clock signal. So that is the rise time and the fall times in the digital circuits. So now, let us talk about the setup time and the hold time of the flip-flop. Now so far we have assumed that at the clock age, whatever input is present at the flip-flop, then it will be sampled immediately. But actually, the input should remain stable for the certain time just before and after the clock age. So these timings are defined using the setup time and the hold time. So the setup time is the time duration for which the input should remain stable before the arrival of the clock age. So in this case, this input is fulfilling the requirement of the setup time. Because here, before the arrival of the clock age, the input remains constant during the setup time. Similarly, the hold time is the time duration for which the input should remain stable after the clock age. So if you see this input, then although it is satisfying the setup time requirement, but it is not fulfilling the hold time requirement. Because here, the input is changing during the required hold time of the flip-flop. So over here, there is a hold time violation. And because of that, we cannot guarantee the proper output corresponding to the given input. On the other hand, if you see this input, then it is satisfying both setup time and the hold time requirements. And therefore, the flip-flop will correctly sample the given input. Now, if you see this third case, then here there is a setup time violation. So here, although the input is satisfying the hold time requirement, but it is not fulfilling the setup time requirement. That means here, the input is changing during the setup time. And therefore, we may not get the correct output of the flip-flop. Similarly, now let us see the propagation delay. So I am sure most of you are already aware about this propagation delay. So, so far we have assumed that at the clock age, the flip-flop samples the input and accordingly, the flip-flop changes the output immediately. But actually, the flip-flop requires a certain time to respond to the input change. And therefore, the change in the output of the flip-flop will appear after the certain delay. So this delay is known as the propagation delay of the flip-flop. So in the datasheet of the flip-flop, the two types of propagation delays are mentioned. That is low to high propagation delay as well as high to low propagation delay. So based on the input to the flip-flop, whenever the output of the flip-flop goes from the low level to the high level, then you need to look for this low to high propagation delay. 
So after the clock age, the time delay after which the output of the flip flop goes from the low level to the high level is known as the low to high propagation delay. So here this P stands for the propagation delay while this LH represents that it is the low to high propagation delay. Similarly, after the clock age, the time required by the flip flop to go from the logic high to the logic low is known as the high to low propagation delay. Now the question is why the flip flop has this propagation delay? Well earlier we have already seen the internal circuit of the flip flop, right? So internally every flip flop is made up of the logic gates. So once we apply the input to the flip flop, then it passes through all the logic gates before it appears at the output. And we know that each logic gate also has its own propagation delay. Therefore, once we apply the input to the flip flop, then it appears at the output after the certain delay. And therefore, every flip flop has certain propagation delay. So, so far, we have seen the three timings of the flip flop. That is the setup time, hold time and the propagation delay. Now, whenever we are designing any sequential circuit using the flip flops, like the counters or the registers, then this flip flop timings are very much important. For example, these timings can decide the maximum operating frequency of the particular circuit. So let us understand the impact of these timings on the logic circuit. So here, this D flip flop based simple sequential circuit is taken as the example. So as you can see, here both flip flops are receiving the same clock. And the output of the first flip flop is given to this combinational circuit. And as you know, this combinational circuit may consist of certain logic gates. Now the output of this combinational circuit is given to the second flip flop. So through this example, now let us understand before designing any sequential circuit, why we should be aware about these flip flop timings. So at the clock age, this first flip flop will sample the input D1. But the corresponding output will appear only after the propagation delay of this flip flop. Right? So let's say the propagation delay of the flip flop is equal to TCK. Q. So basically it represents that after the clock age, the time after which this Q1 output will appear at the flip flop output. Similarly, based on this output, the combinational circuit will generate its own output after certain propagation delay. Let's say this propagation delay is equal to TPD. That means after the clock age, based on this input D1, the new input for the second flip flop will appear only after this propagation delay. So let us see the same thing in the timing diagram. So let's assume that the input D1 is already satisfying the setup time and the hold time requirement of the first flip flop. And here it is logic high since the long time. So at the clock age, the first flip flop will sample this input D1. Similarly at the same time, some input D2 will be also present at the input of this second flip flop. So at the clock age, the second flip flop will also respond to that input. But for a moment, just let us focus on this first flip flop. So let us see how this first flip flop will respond to the input D1. So as I said, at the clock age, this input D1 will be sampled by the first flip flop. But the corresponding output Q1 will only appear after the propagation delay of the flip flop. Now based on this Q1 output, the combinational circuit will generate the new input D2 for the second flip flop. But it will be able to generate that input only after its own propagation delay. So let's say in the beginning, this D2 input is equal to 1. But based on this new Q1 output, now the D2 will become 0. But this change will happen only after the propagation delay of this combinational circuit. So basically, Based on the input D1, this new input D2 is available only after the propagation delay of this flip flop as well as the combinational circuit. So once the new D2 input is generated, then it should remain stable up to the setup time of the flip flop. So basically, this setup time is the constraint of the flip flop. That means if we want to sample this D2 input correctly, then it should be kept constant up to the setup time of the flip flop. So let's say, this is the setup time of the given flip flop. That means this new clock age should arrive after this time. That means over here we have a sufficient headroom. So in the worst case, 
this clock age can arrive over here. That means the minimum required clock duration for the given sequential circuit is the summation of the set time of the flip flop as well as the all the propagation delays which occurs between the two flip flops. So the first two timings are due to the propagation delays while the last one is due to the flip flop constraint. So if the clock duration is less than this time then the clock age may arrive during the setup time of the flip flop and in that case the flip flop may not be able to generate the proper output. So as you can see the setup time and the propagation delay decides the minimum required clock duration or the maximum operating clock frequency of the given sequential circuit. So here if this every time segment represents 1 nanosecond then here this TCKQ is equal to 4 nanosecond while the propagation delay of this combinational circuit is equal to 2 nanosecond and here this setup time is equal to 3 nanosecond. That means here the minimum required clock duration is the summation of all these timings and that is equal to 9 nanosecond and the maximum clock frequency will be the inverse of that that is roughly around 111 megahertz. So in this way the setup time and the propagation delay plays a role in deciding the maximum clock frequency of the logic circuit. So now let us see the role of the hold time. So here for the first flip flop we have assumed that this input D1 is already satisfying the setup time and the hold time requirements. But for the second flip flop also the hold time requirement should get satisfied. That means at the clock age whatever D2 input is present to the second flip flop it should remain stable until the hold time. But in this case as you can see this D2 input will not change until this time. That is the propagation delay of the first flip flop and the combinational circuit. So this additional time is our headroom. So in the worst case suppose we do not have the logic circuit in between the two flip flops then this output Q1 will directly appear at the D2 input. That means now after the clock age this D2 input will change after this time. So of course still we have some headroom but now this headroom will reduce. So to make sure that there is no hold time violation this propagation delay of the flip flop should be more than the hold time. So by satisfying these two conditions we can make sure that there is no setup time and the hold time violations in the particular circuit. So as we have seen the setup time of the flip flop and the propagation delay of the logic components will decide the maximum operating clock frequency of the particular circuit and the hold time does not play any role in deciding the maximum clock frequency. So based on that let us take one example which was asked in the gate examination. So here similar to our previous circuit we have two flip flops and here we have been also given the setup time hold time as well as the propagation delay of the two flip flops. So here the same clock signal is applied to both flip flops. So as you can see the output of the first flip flop is applied to the logic gates and the output of this logic gate is connected back to the second flip flop. Similarly the output of the second flip flop is connected back to the first flip flop. So here we have been asked to find the maximum operating clock frequency up to which this circuit will work reliably. So for that we need to find the minimum clock duration up to which the circuit can work reliably and to find that we need to consider the worst case setup time and the propagation delay of the given circuit. So for that first of all let us start with the first flip flop. So when the stable input is present to the first flip flop then after its propagation delay of the 3 nanosecond it will generate the output for the logic gates. So that output will be applied to the logic gates and the logic gates will generate the output for the second flip flop after their own propagation delay. So as you can see here the propagation delay of the each logic gate is equal to 2 nanosecond. That means the input to the second flip flop will be available after this 3 plus 2 plus 2 nanosecond that is equal to 7 nanosecond. Now once the new input is available to the second flip flop then it should remain stable up to the setup time of this second flip flop and in this case that is equal to 4 nanosecond. That means from the first flip flop to the second flip flop the minimum required time is equal to 7 plus 4 nanosecond that is equal to 11 nanosecond. 
Similarly, now let us see the total delay from the second flip flop to the first flip flop. So once the stable input is available to the second flip flop, then it will generate its output after the propagation delay of the 8 nanosecond. That means the new input to the second flip flop will be available after the 8 nanosecond. And once the new input is available, then it should remain stable up to the setup time of the first flip flop. So in this case, the setup time of the first flip flop is equal to 5 nanosecond. That means from the second flip flop to the first flip flop, the minimum required delay is equal to 8 plus 5 nanosecond that is equal to 13 nanosecond. While from the first flip flop to the second flip flop, the minimum required delay is equal to 11 nanosecond. So here we should consider the worst case scenario and therefore we should consider this 13 nanosecond as the minimum clock duration. Because if we choose 11 nanosecond as the minimum clock duration, then there will be a setup time variation for this first flip flop. Because we have seen that from the second flip flop to the first flip flop, the minimum required time is equal to 30 nanosecond. So if we select 11 nanosecond as the minimum clock duration, then we will have the setup time valuation for this first flip flop. And that is why we need to choose this 13 nanosecond as the minimum clock duration. That means here this minimum clock duration is equal to 13 nanosecond. And if you see the maximum clock frequency, that is F clock maximum, then it is the inverse of 13 nanosecond which is equal to 76.9 megahertz. That means the clock frequency for this given sequential circuit should be less than this frequency. So in this way, based on the setup time, hold time and the propagation delay of the flip flops, we can decide the maximum operating frequency for the particular sequential circuit. Or other way, if the clock frequency of the circuit is already fixed, then we can design the circuit in a such a way that there is a no setup time and the hold time variations for the flip flops. So that's it for this video and I hope in this video you understood about the setup time, hold time and the propagation delay. So if you have any question or suggestion then do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video hit the like button and subscribe the channel for more such videos.